Yes. Now we are live. Yes. Sir, are you ready? We should, uh, we can start now. Yeah. Uh, thanks everyone for joining once again to our uh, international webinar series. Uh, today it's our two webinar and we are very fortunate to, uh, very fortunate that uh, we have a corporate scientist uh, working in a very reputed uh, seed company, agriculture, agri-tech company rather than. Uh, so we are very happy and uh, I'm planning to discuss uh, after the webinar some specific, uh, which are very uh, uh, specific to students and those are interested to apply for a job. Uh, because uh, I got many questions, many mail, many uh, personal questions that about to do something related to that sector for the jobs, for the interview, for the uh, CV preparations and all. So I request our speaker, uh, Dr. Dio sir, that uh, is it possible to discuss something related to our students. And as you know, that majority of our uh, uh, viewers are belongs from the 18 to 34 year age group. So most of the students are viewing that. So it, uh, we will discuss on that. That that is that is the reason. Please stay with us at the end. We try to end everything within two hours, but uh, it is recorded. So you can see uh, when you get that more time, if you not stay for the full webinar. At the end of the webinar, I will share a link for the feedback and certificate applications. And it is 100% sure that if you are registered participants, also submit a feedback, you will get the certificate. But this time the certificate will get four or five days more time because uh, I'll, I'll be out of station for three, four days. So when I come back and I need the certificate, generally five or sixth of December, you will get this, you can able to download all the certificate from our website. Uh, but the list of the successful participant will upload it tonight or tomorrow. Uh, thanks, uh, sir, for coming, BioEngine. As you know, it's uh, slowly growing and your participants will help us uh, to grow more and uh, make uh, a 360 coverage of every personal, every experience, experienced people in plant science. Today, Soma will help me to assist this webinar. I request Soma to introduce BioEngine, to introduce about the certificate collection process because many people join late and they are asking the same questions. So we'll please start with that and introduce our speaker. Okay. Over to you, Soma. Yes. A very warm welcome to all our viewers of BioEngine, a platform dedicated to the promotion of plant science researchers. The esteemed guest speakers on our platform are mostly plant scientists who present their research and future scientists from around the world can gain knowledge, perspective and inspiration. We do this through our webinar series, interview sessions and publications. Thank you for being a part of today's webinar. As more people are joining in, let me provide some housekeeping information related to today's talk. Please note that after attending today's talk, you can apply for a certificate of participation. For this, you need to submit the feedback form that will be provided multiple times in the YouTube chat after the presentation. When you fill out the feedback form, please use the same email address you used in the registration form. And remember to mention your full institute name and address. Mismatch in email ID may result in non-identification of participants and your certificate may not be issued. You can collect your participation certificates after two to three days from our website. BioEngine does not send certificates through email. Please make sure that you have enabled YouTube chat on your device so that you can interact and submit your webinar related questions. We will collect all the relevant questions for our speaker. 
Our esteemed guest speaker today is Dr. Deo Mishra, speaking on the topic, Pathogen Variation and Evolution Insights to Determine the Sustainability of Disease Resistance in Plants. Dr. Deo Mishra is the APAC Plant Health Risk Assessment Lead mm. at Bayer AG Research and Development, Crop Science Division, Hyderabad. He obtained his PhD in plant pathology in 2002 from GB Pant University of Agriculture and Technology, India. During the last 18 years, his research focus has been to tackle challenges primarily in rice bacterial blight pathosystem by investigating pathogen virulence shifts and new race evolution with respect to the development of resistance genetics. Work on these aspects integrated physiological, molecular, and genomic approaches along with laboratory and field experimentation to identify sources of long lasting broad spectrum disease or insect resistance in rice, allowing for the development of customer designed sustainable solutions for small holder farmers in Asia. This resulted in to the development of rice hybrids resistant to bacterial leaf blight and brown plant hopper. Those are currently being grown in more than 4 million acre area across Asia. He has also collaborated on multiple projects for rice crop health improvement with national and international institutes or universities like Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, the Indian Institute of Rice Research, Institute of Microbial Technology, International Rice Research Institute, and the Colorado State University and California University. He has published in many reputed journals and he is also the reviewer of such a journal including Rice, a Springer Journal, Springer Nature Journal. He has published many book chapters and he has been invited to many talks worldwide. We are highly honored that he has joined us today on our platform. I now ask, sir, to please share your screen and let us begin the talk. Thanks, uh, Dr. Subo. Uh, it, it, it's really great. Let me just see if you are able to see my screen. Yes. So thanks, Omar and, and Dr. Suvo. So it, it's a really great uh, platform, what I can see. And you guys are amazing. I Means the kind of things that is being now put here and, and it is being, I means the platform is giving the opportunity to the, to the, specifically to the students who get a lot of knowledge from, from this platform, I believe. And what I can see, there is a lot of students, a lot of new researchers in plant science. They really need, really need such kind of platform where they can learn a lot and apply into their uh, uh, basic research going forward. So it, it's really great to be here and, and share what we have been doing specifically in, in, in corporate world because the basic research, we believe that it is done in public sector and in corporate sector, it is more on the, the applied part. So what I will do today, we'll just discuss what kind of understanding we have developed on some of the area that is important for our customers, specifically smallholder farmers in this region, and how we are helping to make them their uh, uh, farming system more profitable in terms of uh, getting more yield and, and saving their crop. So my topic would be on uh, two aspects. One, I will try to look into and, and share some kind of basic understanding that we had developed on the pathogen part and how that uh, uh, research and understanding that has been applied for the development of some, some, some good products and that is being utilized to the farming community and all these things. And second part for the, for the benefit of students here, so I will just brief 
how buyer is helping the farmers, what kind of research they are, and, and how we are really making a lot of progress in, in crop science front. So that would be really interesting. So going ahead, so I believe Soma has already introduced uh, me here, so I'm not going to take much time here. So as C mentioned, yes, I, I'm, I'm here in Hyderabad and uh, uh, I, I had taken my studies from Pantnagar University, Gobindpur Pantnagar University in India. And then after that, I briefly worked in National Center for Integrated Pest Management in, 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 in New Delhi and then joined Bayer. Uh, in 2003, and since last 20 years, in different capacities, I'm I'm there and working. My area of expertise in in basically plant pathology, but in 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 due course, I have learned and and applied a lot of things in other other areas like entomology, grain quality, disculture, genetics, and and spread breeding and for uh, jump plant development. So. Going ahead on the on the topic, what we are trying to look into and why it is important, because you see in agriculture, there is a need of innovation. Why? Because we see that by 2050, we are going to add uh, more than 2 billion people uh, in, in, in our population. And for that, we need maybe 50% more food and feed. To, to, to feed all those growing population. And, and that is where it becomes very important because due to change in climate, uh, we are seeing that a lot of loss is going to happen. And it is estimated uh, around 17% loss is going to, to happen because of climate change, because of high temperature increase and, and, and all those things that is related to climate. And that's where another big issue we are seeing that because because of urbanization, so there would be a nearly 20% uh, uh, loss in the arable land. So that is going to put a lot of pressure on the kind of ecosystem because that's where we will be having less arable land and we need to really produce more what we are producing here. And in that scenario, because due to change in climate, we are going to see that there will be a lot of pressure from the diseases and insect side and, and even on the beet side. So how to, to look that and how to make it more sustainable. So one example here, you, I, I would like to just say, uh, in, in 1940, if you see, to produce 250 kilogram uh, a corn, so farmer bear using uh, around 1,347 square meter area. But due to inventions in agriculture and, and a lot of invention in, in other front, like the genetics, the chemistry, the BD side, RB side, uh, fungi side and all those. So we have made significant progress. And by now, same amount of, of the yield we are able to get in, 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 in around 167 square meter area. And it is going to further reduce because we, we will be having less arable land and we need to really produce more. So that is one, one thing that is happening uh, uh, means from the, from the innovation in agriculture, but that is also going to uh, put a lot of pressure uh, uh, on, on these intensive agriculture because a lot of uh, pathogen insect and, 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 and weeds, they are going to become more problem. And that's where when we are, we are making the agriculture more intensive, there would be a lot of pressure on us also to save the yield to save the produce from the loss that would happen from the diseases, insect, and all those. And that's where plant health will become very important because we have seen some recent examples where some evolving threats, they are coming into picture. And, and one example, what I, 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 would, I would quote here, recently, three, four months before, we have seen that in North of India, there is uh, there was a viral disease in the in the rice and that has affected a lot of geography mostly in in all those states like punjab haryana up himachal and all those second example is 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 three four years before we have seen that uh, wheat blast pathogen it migrated from latin america to to asia so it was reported in 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 bangladesh and then later on it also started jumping into india as well 
And another one, uh, typical example, if you see how this pathogen, they, are, they, they can move from one geography to another geography. So fusarium built in, in the banana. So that was reported first time in 1967 in Taiwan. And by 2021, you see it has moved across all the globe. So these are the kind of threats that, that will keep on evolving. And, and in, in the system of agriculture intensification, we need to really be on top of these so that we can save the kind of produce that we are looking for. So in, in, the, in the disease triangle, what we see that is there is three major factors that decide the amount of disease, host, environment, and, and pathogen. And that's where I have put pathogen on the priority because that is the major component that, that is responsible and that keeps on evolving. And one of the most important thing is that because due to change in the agriculture system, there will be a lot of evolution that would keep on coming from the pathogen side. And another important thing is that whatever resistance we are deploying today, it is not going to be effective in, 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 in the long term because there will be evolution. So pathogen will keep on overcoming all those things. So that's where the understanding from pathogen side is very important to decide that what kind of genetics we need to place in the, in the system, in the farming uh, uh, label, and then how we want to tackle those things going forward. So that's where I will be focusing more on, on the pathogen in, in today's talk. And I will take example of, of our work that we have done on the rice, specifically rice bacterial blight, trying to link that, how that pathogen understanding is really important to save the crop loss and, and to save the, the, the crop yield. So as we know, you see, as per the estimates, uh, specifically in these three major crops. So more than 30% yield loss that happens uh, across all these crops by diseases, insects, and weeds. So what we say them as biotic stress. And specifically, if we talk about rice, so around 37% yield loss that happens every year on the produce in spite of using all those chemistry and all those. So, and diseases play a major role. And if we see all these diseases here, so BLB blast, they are the important one, and there are some insects like BPH. So they are the major one that cause, uh, I mean, significant contribution into that one. And I will talk more on the BLB today. So BLB, what we have estimated, it is, it is affecting around 30 million acre area in the Asia and it causes significant yield reduction because for bacteria and viruses, as we know, there are no effective chemistry. So that's where it becomes very important to manage this one. And you see, it is, it is important for both, means it is for the farmer, means when farmer is growing the crop, so this can damage a lot. And even in seed production in corporate sector or even in the national seed production system also, that is very important because if disease comes in seed production, then your uh, breeder seed or nuclear seed uh, uh, supply will be really hampered. So what we worked on, so going more specific to on the pathogen side, so we started this journey uh, uh, from 2004 and started looking at what kind of variability in the pathogen is there so that we can really look for the kind of resistance factors that can be effective against all those variabilities so that whatever product or whatever resistance uh, uh, hybrids we are going to deploy that should be effective across all those variability. So we started collecting uh, uh, disease sample from all these area in the India where disease was present and isolated means bacteria and, and, and then try to understand what is the variability there. And that's where, if you see here in this table, so this is the picture of means analyzing uh, around 1400 isolate that was were collected from, from whole, whole country. And after means their reaction uh, uh, on these near isogenic line, then we could group them into 12 major pathotypes. And if you see means 
if if you look from the resistance factor perspective, because these lines they are having single resistance gene, and and the interesting thing is that none of a single resistance gene or resistance factor is able to protect against R. So that is something becomes very important because if pathogen is having a lot of variability, then you need to look into how many resistance loci or resistance factor you want to integrate into your your pipeline or in, 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 in your product. And specifically in hybrid breeding, it becomes more important and sometimes more difficult also because for hybrid, if you are putting resistance, then, and if resistance is like recessive one, then you need to bring from both the parent sides. So that's where it, it, it becomes very important. But I'm not going detail into that breeding process. So we'll be focusing more on the pathogen. So here you will see that, yes, there is a lot of variability in the pathogen that has been uh, looked into this Genthomonas or Ig or Ig. And when we look that how they are distributed in whole country, so you will see here the isolates that has been collected from all the part of the, the, the country. So it looks like they are, they are mixture, means in every place you will see more than maybe five, six, or even at certain place, more than 10 pathotypes, they are, they are dominated. So that is one part, uh, it, it, it shows that yes, pathogen is there and it is dominating everywhere. And we need to really be very careful when we are choosing the kind of resistance that we want to deploy. And when we look the population structure, which race or which pathotype is having more uh, dominance, then this race three was a kind of the one that is having more dominance. And there were others also. So means it, it shows that it is evolving and depending on the fitness of, of, of a, a isolate or a pathotype, its population may keep on changing uh, over the time. So then based on that information, we, 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 we deployed some of these genetics. For example, if you see, so means these are all the genetics, which one is having more effect, which one is having high effect. Based on that understanding, we deployed into the product and they, they have been released in the market in whole Asia and they are working well in, in majority of geography as of now, but risk will remain always there because once we, start growing into those geography, then we need to see that if there are races that is evolving to break that kind of resistance that has been deployed. And that is where we were looking into the, the kind of understanding that need to be looked into to see that how the deployment of resistance genetics can be made more effective and more durable. And here in this picture, if you see, I will take one example like the XA21, that is the major gene that is being deployed now against BLB uh, by public sector and private sector both. And that's where we see, we try to see that what are the population structure in, in this pathogen that can be really uh, uh, able to break that kind of resistance. And if you see all these uh, uh, dots, which are in orange and, and, in, in, and, and reddish in color, so they are the isolate, they have ability to break XA21. And what we found, so out of total those around 1400 isolate, there are around 14% uh, such isolate that can break the, the resistance that is being deployed as of now. So that, so where it becomes very important how quickly we can really monitor those, detect those kind of isolate, those are having ability to overcome the resistance that is being deployed. Then it make our system, our breeding process more efficient to quickly come up with new additional resistance uh, uh, integrated with the deployed one. So that is how, so what how, means what it, it, it is more important here, how quickly and efficiently we can, we can detect those pathogens, how quickly we can really monitor those kind of, of, of pathogen shift that is happening in the race. And you, you all know that that is the, the, the process and we have seen in, in, in recent example of Corona, this virus, so how quickly that race is, means it started changing 
uh, uh, starting from from all over means whatever race was reported first time, then Delta, Omicron, and all those days started coming. So same way it, it, it happens in other pathogen also. So what we try to look because one thing is that the way we have done earlier by 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 manual process of inoculating differential lines and understanding what is happening from the pathogen shift. So it takes a lot, a lot of time. So to, to overcome that, we thought of to look into from genomic side, if we can really start looking from the genome of the pathogen and that can provide some clue to, to really start detecting the kind of pathogen race that is evolving and having ability to to develop, uh, to, to really uh, uh, make the kind of resistance that we deploy too susceptible. So that's where, that uh, means we collaborated with uh, some of these institutes like uh, Center of Cellular and Molecular Biology in, 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 in India and Hyderabad, and then Institute of Microbial Technology uh, in, in, in Chandigarh uh, in Northern part of India. And what we did, we had uh, uh, taken 100 isolate that was representing whole uh, uh, this region in India and we went ahead for genome sequencing to just try to understand that what clue these sequences they can they can provide and how to really long, link those kind of information with the virulence understanding from the pathogen side. And that's where uh, the, the two objective as, as it is means uh, looked into one is that what is the diversity in, in the whole population in India? And then how the population dynamics can be linked with the kind of resistance sustainability, what we talk about means whatever resistance is being deployed, how effective and durable that would be. So that's where uh, we went ahead and, and did that all those genome sequencing. And if you see in this map, so all those uh, Asian Janthomonas uh, oraji uh, oraji pathotype means these isolates, uh, they, they, they came together. So all Asian, they are here. But what was the interesting thing is uh, they were more close to another pathogen of, of, of that Janthomonas species, Janthomonas oraji cola, that is bacterial leaf streak pathogen rather than they were means uh, uh, coming closer to Janthomonas or IG or IG uh, isolate from US. So that was one learning we found that ki, yeah, maybe these or IG cola and or IG, they, they could be closer somewhere. But that is one part. But second part, what we found that what kind of variation is coming into, into, into the genome of all these isolate and what we found that there are five lineages in, in all those uh, 100 isolates that we had tried. And some lineage like lineage one is having maximum population. And there are some like lineage five is, is representing less, 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 less population. And then what we try to look into how this uh, uh, genome sequence information can be linked into uh, the kind of information that we had generated on the based on the pathotyping information. So that we try to link how these pathotypes, they can, they can fit into the kind of these lineages, but it is, looks like it is not a kind of one-on-one -on -one relation, but we could see some, some, some kind of uh, relation like uh, some of these pathotypes, they are coming together and they are falling into lineage one like this pathotype semen is falling into uh, lineage five. So that way, but it was not, not a direct uh, uh, correlation. But what was interesting here to see that which lineage is having the pathotype, those are more virulent. So that's where we can find, uh, we, 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 we saw it that the lineage number three is having the isolates those are more virulent because they are having the ability to cause disease on maximum genetics. So like pathotype two and pathotype 11, so they are having the, the, the more, virulent, uh, more virulence activity. So that's where that kind of understanding we, we got. But 
we also try to look why it is uh, there, all those virulent pathotypes there and isolates, they are going into that lineages. And what we found that there is a lot of high level of recombination in that one. And that, that is something is providing the clue okay, why means that lineage is having most virulent uh, uh, pathotype because this recombination frequency that may decide the kind of uh, kind of uh, genes that bacteria might be acquiring and and that's where they are becoming more virulent and then we also try to look why a a, a specific lineage is having dominance why it is having more population when we look those random 100 isolate. So one clue what we got, the, the CRISPR component, because we all know there is CRISPR, uh, uh, this region in the bacteria, they are responsible for protecting bacteria from viruses. And that's where we found that more CRISPR repeats is providing some clue that they might be having more immunity to the viruses those attack uh, to those bacteria. So that was one clue that we got from this study. And what was more interesting uh, to look into from evolution side, if that is true, then what we found these two isolates, those belong from 11th pythotype, they are having maximum spatial, uh, 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 maximum repeat of the CRISPR means these CRISPR genes. And that's where it becomes very important because if this race that is having ability to break every resistant gene except one, and if it is having maximum CRISPR component there in its genome, then it has every chance to dominate the whole population. And that's where it becomes very important to keep on monitoring such kind of uh, isolate if they are really evolving. Because if they becomes dominant, then they can, they can break the kind of resistance that is, that is being deployed. So this interesting information we got there to understand how a, 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 a specific pythotype or race can dominate in the region. But we were interested more on the virulence side, ki how to really look and, and, and see whether the genomic information can give some clue to start monitoring those races which might be having ability to break the major resistance factor that is being deployed. So that's where we try to look the variation in pathogenicity associated molecule pattern in, in the pathogen side. And we have seen some of these uh, virulence gene, like all these mentioned here. And one clue what we got is the, the variation in the, in the allele, means in the genomic region, which corresponds to this gene, RAXX. So if any isolate that is lacking this gene, or it is mutated at that locus, at RAXX locus, so they are having ability to evade uh, XA21 mediated uh, resistance. So that was one of the most important finding in, in, in this collaboration. And here, this work was done in, uh, in, at, at California University uh, by, by the group uh, led by Pamela Ronald. And we have uh, means seen that uh, uh, means this study that we confirmed with our isolate, like for example, these three isolate, that has been that 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 is having uh, uh, means uh, uh, they are from uh, from diverse origin in India. One is coming from North India, another is coming from southern part, and another is also from north. And what we found, you see, all these three the three isolates, they like the Iraxx gene, and that's where they are able to cause disease on XA20 and one line. These two lines, they are the line that is uh, uh, means one line. This 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 blank bar that is shown here in white color, so it is liking XA21. But the dark color, it is showing this means same line. It's transformed to have XA21. So this isolate is able to cause disease on, on, on the line, whether it is having XA21 or not. But what we did when we transformed that 
isolate and added this rex x into that isolate, then same isolate is not able to cause disease on the line that is having its equality one. So it, it, and it was same for all these three isolates. And that's where we concluded that this rex x locus is the central point to tell that if any isolate is mutated at that locus, then it is having ability to break x equality one. And that's where we try to understand that how it can be made make a more robust and, and can go into high throughput level. That is what is more important if we want to really track what is happening at pathogen site more quickly. So that has been given some clue. And now we are in, in, in some collaborative study to develop uh, the specific marker at, uh, for that, that genetics, that, that specific gene so that that can be applied quickly to, to really detect the kind of isolate if that is having that kind of ability to, to break x for example. And now, since the technologies have evolved, so it is possible even from the leaf sample itself, we can amplify the, the means we, we can just look into the variation in, in the pathogen genome and we can tell that is yes, this isolate uh, that is causing disease on, 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 on this crop or in this variety is having ability to break the x 21 for example. So that is what uh, we, we are there. And, and, and I believe that is going to, to really provide a lot of leverage on, on, the, on the, our understanding uh, on the pathogen side so that we can apply this learning more efficiently and, and, and effectively to deploy effective and durable resistance going forward. So that is one example, but that is not limited to the, to the one pytho system like bacterial blight uh, we have seen, but similar uh, uh, system we are also trying to explore in other pytho system, like for example, this blast uh, that is caused by fungus, Magnapotheorizae. And that's where, if you see, there is a lot of variability in pathogen. And what is known in public sector, this keeps on changing. These races, even there is uh, some report that say that even uh, 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 from same field, every month you can get a new race. And that's where it, it becomes very important if we can have that kind of system developed based on the a virulence gene from the pathogen side uh, to really look into the kind of uh, 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 race that is evolving. And that can really help a lot in surveillance of, of these pathogen, how they are evolving. And based on that, as we discussed, so we can develop uh, some, some efficient system to monitor them and also decide, define, and deploy the kind of resistance that can be more effective and more durable going forward. So these two diseases we are looking uh, from the rise, but we are also applying these things in, in other pathos system, for example, in corn. So we know that corn, uh, some of the diseases like stock rot is the major problem in corn, and it is having multiple pathogen uh, associated with that stock rot. And one, even in one pathogen, like for example, Fusarium, there are multiple species. So we are trying to develop some system uh, based on uh, uh, all these molecular analysis so that how efficiently we can diagnose those pathogen um, uh, which is invo involved into, into these stock rot uh, uh, pathogen, for example, in corn. So the, the, the idea is based on sample itself, if we can isolate the DNA and, and just look into whether it is this species or that species. And it gives a lot of leverage here for these kind of pathogen, which are soil born. If we can categorize all our geography, which pathogen is and which species is dominated in which geography, and what kind of resistant genetics will work against those specific pathogen, then our product development and deployment decisions would be more efficient and more effective. So that's where we are working on, on, on the corn front in this disease. And another example in corn is the downy mildew. 
specifically in some of these Southeast Asian countries, because in India, it is not a major issue, although it is there, but in Indonesia, for example, this is a major issue. And we know that downy mildew uh, is, is also a soil borne disease caused by fungus pernoesclerospora. And there are three species like pernoesclerospora medis, philippiensis, and sorghi. And they are means uh, present in, in all the islands of, of the Indonesia. And then it becomes very important to understand which species is dominated in which geography. Because some of these studies might be available from public sector as well, but maybe it is it was done 10 years before, then now what is the situation uh, currently? So that kind of understanding need, means we need to keep on developing. So we are trying to have the, the diagnostic system here also to understand how they are distributed and what is the dominance of which species. And first part, to diagnose and second part would be if there is some racial uh, uh, differentiation as well going forward to understand. So these are the things uh, basically what we have done as of now and how we want to move ahead to understand these pathogen in better way because currently most of the things that has been on man manual front, so like manual pheno phenotyping and, and with limited use of marker, but what we are, we are looking going forward, we need to really look into the marker enablement uh, uh, for the understanding of virulence and avirulence. And based on that, we want to move ahead into more predictive way. If we can start predicting now, based on this genomic architecture, this is the race that is dominating. But if such kind of genetics is deployed, then maybe after five years or 10 years, there is every pro pro possibility that this kind of race would evolve. So we are looking towards that direction and that is something going to provide a lot of uh, 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 means uh, ability to understand what kind of trait or resistance would be really durable. And we can start predicting that one. So, and there are a lot of advances now in, in that system because genome sequencing is, is becoming cheaper uh, day by day. There are uh, now very efficient uh, and, and, and small size sequencers are available like our mobile phone, this nanopore sequencing system is there and that is very efficient. And we are trying to look uh, this one also to utilize even in field. Uh, uh, you go and take leaf sample and sequence there. So those are the things that we are still exploring, but that is the way forward, uh, what we can say, uh, to really help uh, uh, means to efficiently start looking at how pathogen is developing, evolving, and changing in more efficient uh, manner. But one of the important thing is that all those learnings, what we will, we will do, uh, from the pathogen side. So how it is going to really help us to design the, the sustainable solution for our farming community. One of the model, what we are looking here, uh, basically to design the, the, the product and also design and, and define our, our, our intervention decisions because to manage to, to manage this disease more efficiently, more effectively, we need to go into integrated way. Because one way, one system cannot be long lasting. So that's where what we are trying to look, based on the pest prediction, pathogen, disease, insect, whatever, based on that prediction, we are trying to define what kind of genetics need to be deployed and what kind of chemistry, what we say small molecules. So, these small molecules are, are like weedicide, insecticide, and fungicide. So how they need to be integrated in very efficient manner so that farmer, they get more output and their crop is saved. So that it, it, is, the, the, it, it is now the, that direction uh, we are moving ahead and we are looking into which genetics will combine in better way with what kind of chemistry. And then now our application system is going to, means pesticide application is going to become more efficient because now drones are coming into picture. And then maybe 
we 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 can take uh, this prediction system into consideration so when to apply how much to apply and how much to integrate so those are the things that we are looking into and we we are testing in multiple system like bph uh, brown plant hopper in rice then blast in rice can downy mildew as we have discussed and 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 another disease in can like banded leaf and seed blight so that's where we are trying to integrate different system but pathogen prediction or pest prediction will be a major component in whole system and that's what we are trying to look into one example i will i i, I will put here how that coordinated approach and and, and tailored solution what we say is helping to manage some of these menaces and here if you see the 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 issue of rice brown plant hopper in 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 some of these states in india like in in, in odisha in 2017 and and then in 2018 so it was kind of epidemic of this insect and here in this picture left hand side you will see farmer was not able to save the crop even after six spray of of, of chemistry means that kind of loss you can see and here with native trait the trait resistance factor plus chemistry uh, was able to manage the 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 insect and also farmer was able to harvest uh, the the kind of field they were looking and same way in 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 chatisgarh in, in next year we have seen similar situation so this is something is going to be really a a a, a next milestone where we can start looking to provide a comprehensive solution by all these means that is available from genetic side chemistry side pest prediction then efficient uh, application methodologies and all those and that's how we also try to look means even if we are looking that how these traits can help and what kind of value they can provide to farmer so this is just internal analysis we try to do for these two trait bacterially blight and and bph and it is in terms of of the product that we are selling as of now in in bolesia so like for example in bacterially blight so we are selling multiple product and they are being grown in more than uh, 4 million acre as of now and looking into the damage potential of disease so how much value it might be saving so be that we try to do that kind of calculation and what we found that more than 900000 tons of produce is being saved uh, by our our traits that has been deployed means that kind of protection it is it is providing so this much this much produce products that is having resistance they are able to save and on top of that because if it is resistant then farmer need not to go for pesticide application because in case of bacterial blight there is a lot of antibiotic uh, uh, is, is utilized and that also causes some some cost and also because there will be a lot of relief to farmer because they need not to go and and worry for that if we have that kind of things and same way in bph be 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 brought this trait in 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 the in the geography in 2020 2017 and as per 2020 data so this product is grown uh, uh, in around 250000 acre area and even in that acre area around 100000 tons ear loss has been protected protected by those kind of products those are having resistance to that one and a lot of saving because farmer as we have seen in earlier pictures so they are spraying four time five time six time so those cost if we calculate maybe two spray or three spray still farmer they are saving at least 30 dollar per acre so that kind of additional saving that is happening so that way we see that yes it is really having a lot of impact and a lot of value and that is what we we are trying to bring to our small holder farmers in this region specifically from from all these native traits so for example blb trade be launched in 2008 and then in 2017 we brought this dual trait that is having blb and and bacterial uh, this brown plant hopper together and one example on the impact part uh, uh, we have seen this uh, one farmer from chatisgarh 
she has grown one of the our our blb resistant product and she got uh, 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 30 quintal yield per 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 hectare i believe and uh, whereas in 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 other cultivar what she has grown so it was only 11 quintal and she got award from 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 our prime minister so that kind of means impact it is having uh, 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 on the farming community, it, it doesn't matter that it is coming by a hybrid, by private sector, or it is coming by a varieties, by public sector. It is a matter of, of, of the thing that the traits, the resistance that are coming with the product, they are having the ability to save the crop loss and they are providing a lot of advantage to our farmer uh, in terms of uh, their crop saving. And how we are looking going forward, because you see everything is changing now. So we are looking that how we can provide a sustainable solution to our, our farming community in more tailored way. And that's where genetics, as we discuss, it will become a major part. But on top of that, we need to also look that we, 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 we need to understand the disease prediction models as well. And the pathogen part, as we discussed, key, how they are evolving and how they are changing. So that is also very important. And then, patho then the, the pesticide by genetics interaction that also need to be looked and, and defined so that along with the, this precision application of the, of the pesticide, we can have a holistic, more effective, more durable solution for all these uh, uh, scenarios, what we are looking, be it disease management, be it insect management, be it weed management. So all those things, they require such kind of integration uh, going forward. And how it will help means that's where we are looking. If we are going towards providing customized uh, 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 and customer-based uh, uh, design solution of integrating all these uh, components, then farmer will be having more healthy crops. They will get better ROI, return on investment, and they will be having a lot of convenience because they need not to arrange a lot of things to, to, to go to save their crop. They need not to bother much on, on, on some of these trades. So that's where the, the direction is there. So this is something the work that is not done in in isolation so what I, I i i i i would like to say here a lot of team has been involved into this one and a lot of collaborative studies has been done here so from there uh, many colleagues so i'm i'm here to present on on behalf of them then we had collaboration uh, with ccmb for example in hyderabad dr ramesh sonti and team Imtech uh, Institute of Microbial Technology, Dr. Prabhu Patil and, and, and team. Then Indian Institute of Rice Research, Dr. Sundaram, Dr. Laha and, and, and team. And then IRI, uh, we had collaboration with uh, Dr. Noli, Veracruz and, and Bo Jhao earlier on BLB uh, detection uh, and, and, and even also uh, on, on some of the other projects. Then from California, UC Davis University, Dr. Pam Ronald, uh, and, and from Colorado University, Dr. Jan Leach. So th that is something means makes it more efficient and more effective when we go into collaboration and try to solve some of the some of the really uh, big issues that farming community is facing. So this is all from my side on technical front and, and Dr. Subo, I will take maybe next four or five minutes because there are, I know that there are many students have joined uh, here. So I will just give some brief about the, the bear, how bear is working towards solving uh, the issues on, on, the, on the farming community. And then how we operate on some of these basic research that would be really interesting to, to the, our, our listeners uh, today. So as, we, as, as you might be already knowing, Bayer is a, a multinational company headquartered at uh, 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 Leverkusen in, in Germany. And it is having the presence in all over the world. And it is, it is more than 100 uh, 
150 year old company now. Uh, recently, Bayer has uh, purchased Monsanto and many of you might be knowing. So Monsanto was the leader in the seed sector. So now we, after acquiring Monsanto, so we are the leader in, in, in seed uh, chemistry as well as in, in pharma sector as well. So if we see that what we do, so our mission is basically help for all and hang up for none. And we are operating as as I I told in almost uh, all the all the major countries in the world, and uh, we have around hundred thousand employee uh, working in in, in Bayer. and our R and D expenditure is every year almost five billion billion uh, euro, so huge investment goes into R and D. And that's where we are trying to really uh, uh, solve some, because this kind of investment is needed to solve some bigger problem because the bigger problem need bigger effort. And that's where we need to have a, a kind of solution coming into. And Bayer basically have three major uh, uh, means uh, area where we work in crop science, we work in pharmaceutical and we work into into consumer health. So um, uh, in crop science, where we are part of that, so there are three major component again. We are in seed and trades business and that sector where I also work, but we have crop protection division separately, which tackles all those pesticides and all those. And then we have biologicals also, which uh, uh, take care of microbiome uh, and phytobiome to understand um, how those microbes can, can be really helpful to mitigate some of these challenges. And uh, uh, if you see how we work, so as I told in, 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 in the chemistry, biologicals and crop protection, we are working on insecticide, fungicide, herbicide, and seed growth. On seed sector, we are into some of these broad acre crops like corn, soybean, cotton, canola, oil, seed, and rice. We are also having vegetables uh, uh, and that is separate uh, company, seminis, and we are working in, into, into trades as we have discussed. So those are some native trade, but we are having transgenic trade as well. And we are also into digital technologies because you see that digital platforms, they really provide a lot of solution, a, a lot of things that can be looked from the integrated uh, perspective. So we are there also. And environmental science um, also is, is, is a major part, but uh, recently we are divesting this one means that is, uh, we will be focusing more on, on, on this one. And our mission you see is, is kind of, we need to really look towards uh, uh, health for all and, and hunger for none. And that's where we are focusing uh, on more into innovation and also digital transformation and, and, and also supporting a lot in, towards the sustainability. So I will give a few example, but ultimately the, the, the overall idea is to have the tailored solution to customer design solution so that whatever offerings we will be having to farming community that is more effective and more durable going forward. And that's where um, uh, our uh, means sustainability commitment comes into picture and we have made the commitment into, into, into uh, at, at a bigger platform like World Economic Forum and United Nations that we are going to reduce the, the, the climate uh, means this uh, greenhouse gas emission by 30%. We are also going to uh, uh, reduce the environmental impact by crop protection uh, by 30% and and also supporting uh, more than 100 million in a smallholder farmer in the region by way of educating, providing tailored solution and, 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 and partnering with them. And that way we will be helping the, 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 the to helping to achieve the sustainable goals that has been defined by United Nations. So this is our commitment and we are working towards that. And we, we have already touched more than 30 million smallholder farmer already in, in, in way of many, many technologies. And, and how to achieve those sustainability commitments? So like we are maximizing uh, now uh, more in cover crops so that our carbon pool in soil can be maximized. We are uh, increasing the yield 
we are also working on 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 how to reduce the water uh, um, uh, fresh water and all those and then how digital platform can be really looked into and can provide a kind of sustainable things and then also innovating where we can reduce the methane emission for example in rice like direct seeded rice so that is a big way that we will be coming into and also like no till farming so these are some of the approaches and we all know that like for example if we are looking towards carbon zero future of agriculture then some of the cropping system need to be really changed and one of the bigger area that is being looked at at as in in rice means transforming towards the direct seeded rice because that will save a lot of fresh water and that will also reduce to to means that will help to reduce the carbon emission and that way uh, this system will be more efficient and what we have seen the hybrids they perform better and they help also uh, uh, better to reduce these greenhouse gases going forward so that is what uh, we, we we are looking and in seed as i told that we are into these major uh, row crops like corn soybean cotton uh, rice sorghum wheat and, and and canola and we have uh, more than 120 location around the world more than uh, 25 countries we are working on germ plan trait improvement and 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 agronomy of the crops and this this is something is is the my i believe last slide so what we are looking in the way the 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 research the 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 plant breeding would be moving is something like what we have been doing till now it is like you grow a lot of population and select from that but what we are trying to look to move from selecting the best to design the best we 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 are into that process that we can understand each and every component what is re uh, required to design a, a best uh, product that would suit for the farming community and that is the direction i believe in many sectors now um, um, means they are looking what better suit to the our farming community so that is something we, we are going to design and there is a lot of investment coming into the picture along with that we have a lot of commitment on environmental sustainability and also supporting our our small holder farmers uh, in, in 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 the region asia uh, 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 preferably and and going forward in 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 other area also specifically in crop science so that is what uh, um, i would like to conclude here because Um, um with this message what uh, uh, dr gorlag has has made be, because like everything else can wait but agriculture cannot and the time is now I mean that is what we are we are trying to look because looking into the population growth and reducing reduction in the area cultivable area so it requires a lot of innovation a lot of in, in investment and that's where we are trying to really look into so that is all from from my side dr subo uh, uh that is something yeah maybe we can go ahead yeah. if you have some questions uh, uh thank you sir uh, it's a, it, it's always a corporate slides are very nice always i admire the corporate slides presentations and their representations and many people also comment on that the slides are very nice and good it's a tremendous work as i as i work in similar field so i know the how tough to isolate the culture uh, it's have to go the field at the right time right situations so collections is a very tough uh, before i taking few question i already collected few questions i have a one question sir uh, like when we ask them the culture like we, we generally we mpcc chandigarh we Uh, uh request them for the culture is there any provision to request buyers uh, for any culture like uh, uh, rice or 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 is there any system uh, to uh, because you guys also have the populations so it is open to public or it is only for the collaborative work so as of now because you see that isolate sharing has been a bigger issue and and we tried to look into that way 
so we are into that system our our team is looking that kind of opportunity because from our side there is no issue to to share all those because that is for for the for for, for the benefit of our farming community only thing is that we need to follow the process that government has defined so if we are on that part then i don't see any 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 issue but we are still working because there is no well defined way one thing is like pathogen cannot move uh, uh, from one country to one other country so that is one one challenge then second thing is that if government has already defined some guidelines so we need to look into that framework and maybe that that way it would be really possible okay uh, because uh... always kind of pure culture is a challenge uh, <laughs> uh, I, uh, i had uh, in my phd uh, it took uh, about uh, one year to find out the right population uh, it is available in atcc but it's very costly so i preferred to mtcc and they gave me four culture so uh, it took three months for every culture last three months is the right populations where i my, i can clone my genes so uh, it is very tough uh, sometime uh, to collect the right culture and you have to sure about that now a day paper also asking for genome sequencing of the culture if you if you mention the culture then you need to some sequencing report on that that it is the right culture so uh, it's it's a challenge those are working on that sector i'm i'm sure they are also facing on that uh, i have collected four five questions uh, there are i think many questions will appear when you we ask you your interview sessions because it it going to be a fun uh, but before going for that uh, soma can you spell uh, can you uh, can you go for the this four questions uh, four five questions which is available in the youtube chat box uh for uh, presentations on the youtube questions yes youtube questions okay okay so uh the the ones which you highlighted right yes four questions so um just I'll try to say the name also of the person who has asked a question uh, yes because it's an international people so many people are from egypt in nepal philippines and name is different uh, okay go go for the question gashao uh, shafera asks how is it possible to integrate multiple and durable pest resistance in a single cultivar is it through conventional or genetic engineering yeah that's that's very good question and because that is the way now uh, different teams even in public and private sector is working so one thing is that means that was possible by a conventional breeding also but use of molecular markers make it more uh, efficient because without using those markers it will take a lot of time so what we try to do utilizing gene or locus specific molecular marker to integrate multiple resistance factor together because in in case of hybrid rice because hybrid we know that uh, it is it is it is coming by a two parent and depending on resistance kind of resistant genetics if it is dominant or if it is recessive so that decides ki how you want to integrate so if it is recessive you need to put into both the parents so that it can be have as homo homozygous in 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 the hybrid part but yeah to the question what they have asked so it is yeah by a, by by help of molecular marker so that is what we, we do so we don't do any transgenic uh, things uh, here for integrating multiple genetic because if gene is available in same uh, origin set i by then it it becomes very efficient if it is in lead background okay so uh, puvar Bhupendra Sinha asks, "Sir, what is the scenario of genome editing in plant protection?" Uh, specifically yeah. in in your company, I think uh, in buyers. Yeah. And... yeah. So that is something 
you, you you all know that that is the evolving science now and everybody is talking on that front before i believe one year so it was kind of means still i i believe the european union they have not decided that how to tackle that one but now in many country you know meditating is is going to be reality so we are also working on that is not specifically on plant health part one example i can quote on 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 sort stature calm so that we are bringing uh, uh by geno uh, meditating also as well as by a native trait because that native trait is already defined so that way but that is the way forward because we know that it is very efficient on the target so and now it is being allowed by most of the countries so that is something is going to be reality so right now it is more focused on yield yield improving traits or maybe crop physiology trait but means there are research going on on, on plant health uh, front as well so that is going to come okay so uh, vijay kumar is asking uh, bph has become a serious problem so far paddy cultivation is concerned could you suggest any comprehensive control measures yeah so that that is that is really a good question because that is what is seen since last many year although this insect is very dynamic in one year it will become like a epidemic and next year the the, the population goes down but the approach what uh, i try to explain that is what we are looking as as more sustainable and more effective where you can combine the resistance along with the effective chemistry so that is the only way because insect if, if you keep on applying insecticide insect will develop resistance and then after certain period of time insecticide is not going to be effective so that's where means our approach now is to provide farmer a sustainable solution where genetics then our insecticide and prediction pest prediction ki when the there is a chance of this insect to multiply very efficiently so that is what we are advocating now so we have product that is there already in market so people means uh, their name is farmers they are choosing that and then they are saving means they are many a times we have seen if they have deployed the resistance uh, product in their farming uh, means fields they either they don't need far spray or by one spray they are able to save the crop so that is only the way going forward because we cannot rely on one one way right for such insects okay shubho i don't think there are any more questions right no, now no uh, if if uh, if there is we will ask after the so we can um, yes, move on to the interaction or inter- interview session uh, so uh, sir um, we would love to know how you built your career could you please share your journey as a plant scientist with our viewers yeah that that is very interesting question i i i see because when i was doing my phd in pantnagar so i used to say i i used to say, see very frequently farmer they were visiting our laboratory with the plants uh, into into their bags and showing to our uh, means teacher there ki what is happening to our plant and all those so one day i asked to my advisor ki what is what is they are bringing and what is the solution of that so he told these are the diseases and like for example bacteria and all those so that is affecting these area more uh, frequently specifically you see that geography tarai region of uttarakhand and, and in up so there i started uh, means developing some kind of uh, interest uh, uh, this is something really uh, means need some attention and then i asked my my teacher ki what is the solution then because if it is like every year we are seeing this so so he told that for some of the diseases we don't have very effective solution from chemistry side so you need to look a comprehensive approach specifically focusing on resistant genetics 
So okay. then I thought that is something means interesting area given a chance um, I, I can really look into. And fortunately, uh, after completing my, my PhD, I, I was there in, in uh, National Center for Integrated Pest Management in New Delhi for, I believe, six months. Then I got more chance because there I was more on pathogen monitoring, just visiting farmer field and look at what is happening. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that is something really a serious issue in some of the geography. And that time there was no resistant cultivar I'm talking about in, in 1999 and, and 2000. Mm -hmm. So luckily I got the chance in, in, in Bayer at that time and the target was this one only. So that was really <laughs> a great time I, I could say. And then from there I, I started uh, working on. So initially as I had shown since 2003, 2004, collecting all those disease sample understanding pathogen, what kind of variability is there, what kind of resistance would require to tackle all those things. So that way it went. Uh, I started from a scientist there. Uh, I joined in Bayer um, in 2003, then worked on rice diseases. Then at later part also started working then on the insect like brown plant hopper. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have uh, an entomologist in, also in our team. So that way it, it went ahead specifically on plant health. And, and, and then uh, later I was also looking the, the some other function that was uh, really supporting whole breeding uh, 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 function for the APAC, like grain quality in rice, you know, that is very important. Mm -hmm. Then our uh, some new initiative like speed breeding and all those, so that's how it it, it went. Means starting from farmer, how they are looking some of these problems, how they are facing that one, what kind of solution it can be there. So means means I was looking that what kind of opportunity could be there, be it in public sector and private sector and I can become a part of that solution. So that's how it is started uh, SOMA. And then now means since last three, four years, so I'm more on more focused on this risk assessment part. I mean, there is separate team now in our function who is working on the product development, but I'm looking more on this pathogen, how they are evolving in rice and corn, and then a lot of collaboration with some public and, 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 and private sectors. So I started as scientist and my, my interest was also into science because I consider myself as science leader, not a kind of manager and all those. Mm -hmm. So that's where it, it went and, and, and now where we are, but I'm fully satisfied because now we have developed some solution and that is being grown in more than 4 million acre area across all, all the geography in, 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 in Asia. And the way it is supporting the smallholder farming community, that is really remarkable. And that is something we see a lot of satisfaction also. Because you, 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 you know that smallholder farmer in many area we have seen they have one acre land or right. two acre land, mm -hmm. and that is their livelihood. They are dependent on, on that only so if they lose means they they lost their lost their their crop due to mm -hmm. any kind of this scenario then it is really hard yes that is something means <laughs> the story uh, how i started and uh, how i am here to support yeah so i suppose that is what motivates you to work for the betterment of agriculture exactly because that is something, because if you visit the area, and one more example I would like to give this year when this virus disease started appearing in rice in Northern India, I visited some of those geographies in Punjab, Haryana, and all those places. So it means people, people, even scientific community is clueless what to do because some disease, they appear for the first time and they bent into maybe 1 million acre area mm -hmm. and many field, uh, what I have seen more than 80% or 90% plant loss. So 
means that, that is something gives you trigger to to solve that kind of problem right. and means by science only we 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 can solve because unless and until we don't understand what is happening why it is happening it is really very difficult and that's where i see a lot of public sector institutes they are doing remarkable job i i, I could say so that's how problem started and within few week punjab agriculture university they decoded the genome of that that particular virus mm-hmm. and even i right so that that's how it 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 goes so we are not into that kind of basic research but we are trying whatever understanding the scientific community is developing how to apply in exactly. in, in product development and is very how important. we can reach here yeah, to farmer otherwise it will never come to the market will always stay in research only so it's a exactly. commendable work uh, sir according to you which sectors of plant science research is likely to prosper in the near future you see means uh from means it depends on which perspective we are looking into but for farmer perspective if we talk about then linking with the growing population farmer need that kind of cultivar which can yield more in less resource mm-hmm. so one area what i see although it is more on on the and the genomic and all those things what people say that is yes, genome editing is the one area that is going to change everything there is a reality also means that is having that kind of ability to 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 transform but another area what i am seeing and that is not much explored it is the the microbiome hmm. microbiome in plant system is is not explored much and that is the area that can really define how crop should be grown and how a microbial community can help to mm-hmm. perform a product in better way right. so those area is going to really explore uh, uh, means a lot in, in going forward and third component is is now everything is going into digitization way Right. so that is something means if people start predicting the things and and communication is is sent back to farming community that can help for the farming community and for our farmer to really make right decision at right time and you know when we were looking some of the information farmer makes more than 40 decision in 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 crop cycle Hmm. and you see that how important those things are there so decision making what to do and what to not not to do if there is support to those farmer maybe that is something is going to really uh, help a lot so maybe all these two three area they have a, a lot of potential to really look going forward in in, in agriculture sector. so talking about digital agriculture uh, do you think it is wise to combine artificial intelligence and agriculture and also is it feasible that is the way means it it is going 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 now because you see everything is on data right and data science is something is going to be a, a big driver for, for everything and then ai comes into picture because that will decide the robustness of any system because the, the the amount of data you have analyzed and you have looked into to make any kind of model mm-hmm. to be successful so that is the, the the thing so I, i believe what you are asking so that is going to be reality going forward and some of the sectors even 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 in, in agriculture also they are bringing new platforms like a, a fl- platform that can solve a lot of problem even in bear also we are having a platform ca- called as farm rise where farmer can connect and they can send their queries what kind of solution they need so everything is linked together mm-hmm. so that way means that is something is going to be reality and it is means more efficient now because things are becoming more cheaper and cheaper internet is there and mobiles are there so decision making would be more efficient and that's where yes this ai and data is going to change okay. the life 
Sir, uh, what are your thoughts on climate change and global warming effects on agriculture? You see, climate change is the reality, means nobody can, can, can deny. And that's where uh, means effect on agriculture is also a kind of reality. And that's where what I told, even, even in public sector as well as in private sector also, they are looking how to reduce those impact. Mm -hmm. And one way, what we are looking in rice, for example, because rice is rice cropping system, I would not say that rice crop, rice cropping system is a major, major contributor in the, in the carbon emission, like mm -hmm. this greenhouse gas. Because that greenhouse gas is produced by bacteria, not by rice. But since that system support. So that's where uh, if we can really transform some of those cropping system that is more efficient, more uh, sustainable, like DSR direct seeded rice. So that is something is going to change uh, this, this, this so scenario. So like, sir, so there is this post harvest problems with, you know, fields like when farmers burn the leftover, you know, stubble on the field. So, so like you said, that like microbiome can take, uh, you know, an important part in that. Exactly, that, that is one of the issue. Mm -hmm. And what is required because it is not easy to eliminate all those uh, um, means uh, plant parts after harvesting mm -hmm. within a few days. Mm -hmm. So that's where, because there is no chemistry or no, because chemistry also will add, means a lot of pollution and all those, even if it is there. So microbials, they will play a major role. Mm -hmm. And that is something doable also. I, I believe that need to be more, uh, means prioritized and, and disseminated those kind of information to farming community. Because it doesn't require more, much, much resource to develop a pit mm, right. and just put your all those uh, uh, leftover uh, from the field into and, and just put some of these microbials which can decompose it very mm, efficiently mm, mm. rather than burning. Right. It is not a big issue what I say but it is a matter of mindset means changing the exactly. mindset. Awareness. Awareness exactly and then farmer starts realizing that yes they can benefit from that. Hmm, if they right. exactly. all those things, then <laughs> yeah. they can utilize that in their farming system. So it is a matter of showcasing, mm -hmm. making them aware. Mm -hmm. Because I have seen means farmer they don't go in in, in wrong way. It is a matter of means lack of information many many times. So that is how. It was lovely, sir. Uh, well, sir, what is your opinion on GM crops and do they have a future in attaining food security? Definitely, because you see many of the things, means I, I would not say that that cannot be done without GM, but that may take a lot of time. Mm. But due to all these innovations on that front, which is not amenable by normal way of breeding. So that's where that technology becomes a very efficient uh, means way and it can be utilized more. It means we all know that the success story of BT cotton, for example. And there are other things coming into picture in, in near future. So means now we have different tools. I mean, GM is one tool. Now we have genome editing that can also means uh, uh, support a lot. So those are the technologies. I don't see that there should be any issue. And our testing system and, and all those systems by government, they are very efficient. If there is something negative things coming with all those. Mm -hmm. So I don't see that it is something is, 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 need discouragement, it should be supported. Right. Okay, sir, now we are coming to a point where we can talk about uh, the our viewers, you know, like the students and scholars who are watching. Uh, sir, when you hire someone, uh, what qualities do you look for other than academics? Yeah, so that is, that is very important question. And that is, 
specifically for students although all those process is done by hr not mm. by scientists <laughs> because scientists are also part of that system but they look more on the technical front ki how if is in you know, they are so two things are there one is how sound you are technically uh means whether you know things or not means that is one part ki how much you know but most important part is that how much you can apply what you know means whether you have just read the information that is there in in google platform mm-hmm. and whether you know on the applicable up, up means how it can be applied mm-hmm. so that is more important there and and other than those means these are more kind of technical thing but other than these people just also try to look specific, specifically the hr people how the some of the soft skills mm. that a candidate is having and what i could say that those soft skill is kind of maybe these three four area leadership quality because mm. in corporate sector we need really look whether you can lead some project whether you can lead a team Mm-hmm. uh so all those then how efficient you would be so what is your efficiency so they have certain criteria they try to take means some of those questions on that way and it will be more on situational based actually there will be some situation and then you will be asked how you respond to that one so those are some of the things that is that is looked more other than means those are also a important part other than these technical skill but te- in technical also what you know but how you apply so that is that is more 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 one and another important point in those soft skill is the flexibility so how right. flexible you, you would be provided that whether you work uh, in 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 different team or in different situation are even many a times if there is a resource crunch then how you will optimize your your activity and and and, and your work so those those are the area people should keep on looking and and try to develop uh, means themselves into that other than the scientific things because every role will have certain uh, means expectation from from the job perspective but other than those specific technical uh, the things Uh, we also look on on those means how that person will will work mm-hmm. in certain how conditions. well that person will fit into your team mm-hmm. exactly okay. uh, sir um, we would love to hear your words of advice to the students and scholars who are pursuing a career in plant sciences in corporate sector like after watching this uh, you, you know presentation they would be highly interested to you know join buyers uh, you know uh, bear and they would be they would have so many questions in their minds like what to do how to get there so some small tips uh, like uh, for example um, other than the basic information and academics that they put in the cv what mm-hmm. other points can they cover in the application in the cv yeah means w- one thing is that i i, I told means just follow your passion means if you have passion to work um, in, in in corporate sector Uh, and you have passion to perform then i believe it it is best suited because in cb we don't look means how many publication you have uh, how many means year you have worked where and which which institute and all those it is a matter of means what you have done and how you have done okay. so that is something more important so that way they should look and and many a times it although it doesn't matter whether you want to work in public sector or private sector but if you have interest to really means contribute in science means maybe you you just try to look means in which sector you you want to go into to basic research maybe then public uh, institute mm. they would be more suited but if you want to look into applied part just look Uh, from from that perspective maybe corporate sector that would, would be but one thing is for certain in corporate world you have to deliver 
right because that is <laughs> that is that is <laughs> so that kind of mindset means uh, uh, people and students should really have and i believe these days students they are means they are they have more access to the to the information that is mm-hmm. that is available at, at at multiple front so they can choose their their path but only these two two basic things means if you want to really work into into those basic research gene genomics molecule and all those maybe some of the good public institute they would be really great but if you want to really uh, be m- more close to our our farming community maybe you can you can look for the corporate work also so do you have any points of suggestions for the students while they are communicating through email about job applications in companies such as bear uh means in communication uh, you just try to look that uh, what kind of job you are interesting whether it, the communication is just to ask if there is any opening in the in the company or if you are responding to some opening and you are applying so means your covering letter should describe why you are applying on the particular mm-hmm. position why you want to work on that 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 particular uh, topic uh, that is meant for that that position so that part need to be means emphasized in your covering letter because many times what we have seen so it it, it just says i am this 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 and i want to join and i want to this one but what exactly what you want to do So how so maybe that makes some catching point when we look and and a screen uh, a lot because for a position many a times you get maybe 30 40 or maybe 100 uh, applicant cv wow. so you need to just start looking briefly key what are there because based on that maybe our hr guys they also try to look that what kind of mindset is coming into into that picture so i'm getting this uh, vibe that a person should have some sort of a training prior to applying so it will look good or you know the cv would have be meaningful because if they are uh, were they are applying for a particular type of job then they should have some training beforehand in that so Uh, are there any internships or short trainings or dissertation projects available or possible with your team yeah means there are two part one thing is that means your work and your activity where you have been if it is matching with the position then that has to come some in some or other way either in your your covering letter you just mm-hmm. try to emphasize or when you are drafting your cv you, you can you can put that very specifically second point what you are trying to look into uh, is is the internship yes definitely means be offer internship and uh, means uh, students they can connect means now everything is available on on the website as well so they can they can just apply um, on the web site also or they can just send the 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 mail on the correspondent there what is mentioned so we keep on offering the internship and whoever is interested in that specific field we put them uh, into into that i believe it is starting from 3 month to 6 month okay. and and maybe a year so that is that is that is there so they should keep on visiting uh, frequently on on the website so uh, another question is that if you if somebody shifts or changes his field of work does that matter in a private corporate sector such as bears you mean uh, maybe you can re phrase your question means like, within company or yes, uh, like plant sector is a vast field so if they have shifted from one sector to another like from seed to a different like uh, plant pathogen to specifically to seed uh, st- uh, preservation or you know something so is it possible i mean do they consider I mean, is it okay they can can it be done i mean or you know yeah yeah yes yeah. yeah means within company for example you joined for a job 
and 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 later on you reinvented yourself to look for other op- mm-hmm. opportunity within company right it is possible means looking into your your interest and and if you see there is another possibility what we do we put them into short term assignment hmm, okay. and then we try to see that what kind of ability they are showing hmm. and then later on they are shifted so because sometimes we ourselves don't know what we would shine at later yeah, the opportunity yes. comes we okay and that's where in in these bigger corporate uh, companies so there is a lot of opportunity means for example in bear we are into pharma sector we are into consumer health we are into crop science and within crop science we are into chemical we are into seed we are into biological mm-hmm. if anyone for example joined in seed but he is having interest in in chemistry so he can see that kind of opportunity and 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 he can move so okay. that that that's not issue okay uh, so um, like uh, when you when you applying when the student is applying for uh, job at payer so how important is the internal employees reference for getting a job there uh means it doesn't matter much many a times because ultimately the 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 appointment goes through rigorous process hmm. means selection process is very rigorous and that goes at uh, multiple level right so it is not one person selection so maybe there are different committee maybe four five committee they means they look from different angle so internal people what they can just suggest some cv Yes, this is the CV I am. I am putting. If someone has missed some opportunity, so they can they can put that one. But ultimately, the candidate need to perform there. Right. So that is how. So means, for example, if you if you know that there was a opportunity and you missed, but if you know someone in the company, you can send directly the CV there, and they will look into and and, and consider. So that is only thing. Mm-hmm. otherwise i don't see that uh, um, means everything goes into that that process only so uh, are there any things that should not be discussed or avoided during an interview in such a reputed <laughs> company <laughs> yeah means what we avoid means we don't discuss personal things means that is that is something so we need to be very specific and and you try to put the example Mm-hmm. where you are involved because very many a times we have seen that candidates they put some hypothetical example right right <laughs> and, and and that is something make it 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 bec- difficult for them because they mm-hmm. sometimes they feel that yes i know that they, nobody knows that one but that is the wrong 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 thing so they should not do you put the example where you were involved mm-hmm. or where you know perfectly so that is something they should they should avoid doing it be true yes <laughs> otherwise hmm. that is something yeah otherwise i believe uh, if you are true enough what you are talking about hmm. then and, and feel confident means if you are confident on on the point what you are talking about then i don't see that there is any issue because in interview system we don't look that how much you know we try to know whatever things you are knowing how accurate you are and how involved you are into that information system so, that so is- I, i don't know if i should ask you this uh, but do you have any tips on salary negotiation during job interview that is done by the hr hr <laughs> one but it means you see in in bigger corporate that is a not a matter of concern because they follow principle hmm. and it is not like that they will negotiate with you and you means you will be put on the lower risk scale so that doesn't happen even if you less ask also because they will ask that is how what is your expectation hmm. but ultimately it has to go into that process company rules and regulation so if you are asking 1 rupee but that position need to have 2 rupees then you will be given 2 rupees so that is the means right everything is yeah there is a open. system yeah yes. exactly 
so uh, we are very close to the uh, end of the session uh, sir uh, we would be interested uh, to learn how to secure patents or iprs and good publications uh, that is something i was discussing with also dr subo so maybe uh, we can have that discussion with the with the some of the colleague uh, who is more into that one because in in private sector specifically where we are into more uh, towards commercial side mm -hmm. so we don't publish much means right. from publication side but yes there are some something on, on the patent side i may not be having that much understanding on that front so maybe what i was discussing with dr subo we can okay. have another session sometime yeah sure on, on, on that part yeah okay so i think we have covered quite a broad area today and uh, so ashubo uh, do you uh, have yes. any questions yes uh, two questions two questions from uh, youtube uh, you can find in the chat in youtube uh, docs okay let's see youtube docs and in the meantime i shared the link the yes you have uh, okay So, Pratik Davaria asks. Uh, see, uh, he wants to know that uh, post-induced gene silencing approach is it uh, is it uh, practiced in uh, bears? Uh, post-induced gene silencing approach, sir. Are you guys using this technique? Post-induced no, gene I... silencing. <laughs> yes, gene uh, silencing. It's, uh, I think it's not uh, in such a practice. Uh, yeah. it's, it's very initial stage. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, it's more into academic, not in application. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yes. Annalyn Rikana asks, I'm from the Philippines. May I ask how best we could maintain our crop sustainability on disease resistance? Is it through organic farming or genetic modification? You see, organic farming or natural farming or whatever the normal way of farming, it, it to me it doesn't means matter much from the from that perspective. Because many a times you see the disease they they comes in different forms. They are airborne, soil borne, and all those. Sometimes the organic way of doing may change the microbial system in the soil and they may either become more conducive for the disease or they may be non-conducive one. But the best way to, to manage the crop, those two, three areas as we discussed means prediction based the, the chemistry intervention and then kind of resistance genetics that we want to integrate with that. And what we were talking about microbial uh, microbials like microbiome, so that is something is going to be reality in, in coming uh, coming coming uh, future as well. So ultimately, it will be more integrated way, not like uh, organic farming or or the way we are doing chem right now, because everything is means in, in in real term everything is organic and nothing is organic. So means. <laughs> It is a matter of perception only. Mm. So we need to be more sustainable where you need means you should develop means people should develop such a system where everything is applied appropriately. Mm. It is not that chemistry is toxic or even the the even medicine is also harmful if you take in 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 in, in an appropriate way. So that way. So for pest means there are some studies that can say that in organic farming it was this pest was less, this pest was more, but it depends on the situation, crop, and 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 the region. So that's where otherwise I believe both system they 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 go together. But only thing is that for disease or insect management, we should look the comprehensive way. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> no. Nothing, uh, nothing, uh, any other questions I have. Uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, 
great play, uh, great webinar. I can say, and many many people are watching. Already nine hundred uh, nine hundred plus people have watched this webinar. And as you know, it's recording, recorded. So it's it it, it many people and more people will watch in in future. And uh, what uh, what we tr uh, try to uh, address today uh, that uh, students should think in the, the, that way also because uh, uh, we are uh, for my experience I learned many things at uh, uh, when in later stage of my life and in, in case I can say in in after MSc or uh, in PhD I learned many things so. Uh, that that's the why reason that I try to build bioengineering that way. That if you have interest, so you can know that where you should go and how you should go. So that is the one one reason to run bioengineering for the benefit of younger students. And you know, plant scientists are few. And as you mentioned, Bollock, that uh, agriculture can't stop. Everything can wait, but agriculture not. So it's another contribution from bioengineering that we can bring more people to the plant and agriculture. So one day we are we are also sustaining food and addressing food security and in that way. So uh, day by day we are growing and obviously like you and other speakers, uh, those are giving the talk in that platform, give us uh, more more. Uh, uh, throughout 360 degree level of knowledge. That's why I wanted to put other things like we discussed, like IPR, like patenting. As I know, I, I need to patent two, three product, uh, process patent, but I don't know the exact way. And <laughs> I also focus on the publications. So it's a very tough to balance that way. A few days back, we are discussing with another uh, scientist um, C will become in bioengineering very soon. Uh, doing the animals research from the ICMR, and uh, C uh, told me in that that way that how we should balance in that way. Uh, how we can uh, in academia it's also important, and for us our early career, then it's also a criteria not uh, something is also necessary that you have a Python. Uh, so in, in that way, uh, we know many things and we have to learn many things. So uh, when I learn something, I try to bring them in bioengineering. So where I can learn, others can learn, and it, it can, it, it, it present there for more people to view and learn them. So that is the intention. and. Uh, Research is my main focus. So nowadays, that is the problem. And many people ask me many subjects. So last webinar, someone asked for the presentation on bamboo. So I can manage our, manage our speakers. Uh, and luckily, he is very close to me. So maybe next talk is on the bamboo uh, related. So it's also our focus to bring all the plants uh, to learn. Uh, because rice, wheat, maize, are, everybody know these plants, but many plants are there, many opportunities are there. Uh, Sir, thank you very much from a, uh, from a uh, private uh, and corporate world. It's really matter uh, to your participants in that field because it encourages people. And also they, uh, they are learned that you guys are also doing the same thing, what university and institute do, but need some barriers, need some stages to complete to that, that type. And, uh, and uh, is number is uh, limited. It's not a college or school. Uh, so you have to be prepared in that way that you compete in that way. And it's a multi-international business or company. So, you have to be that mindset on getting a job and sustaining it in the job. It's also very important. Something it's you got it, right. but you can't sustain. So thanks. Uh, now we got the uh, appreciation of by by engine. So I think everybody uh, is happy for today's webinar.
we are very happy i am personally very happy uh, i'm also very happy <laughs> <laughs> uh, and sir we, yes uh, in future we'll try to do and bring your uh, bar, bar, uh, bar ipr team or uh, that team those, those are uh, can guide us that how to pattern how to apply how how the trademark how the uh, how to write it in that research way. and patent uh, you know <laughs> yes but but it it has to be it has to be because others are doing that they are very good on that so why not that uh, asian african and uh, countries are doing that in that way uh, so uh, uh, i it, i want to say thanks for your presenting and this is a great webinar. Your slide is very nice. Your work is throughout the India and your collaboration is also outstanding output giving to the company and for the uh, uh, society. I want so, to thank uh, sir because I really bothered him with so many questions and he kept on answering them so beautifully <laughs> thank you so much i was like i mean i mean i was then a student in mind and i was keeping on asking you all these questions so please don't mind and thank you for answering so nicely no that's that's, that's really great uh, dr subo and, and suma because i i attended this platform i believe last year sometime and then thought wow this is this is really amazing things that is happening at certain platform and and you see it is it is more important for the upcoming generation the kind of students engagement i was looking into the list that is yes, a lot of students they are participating so that is where because if we provide them right kind of information they can change their mind the way means they look the things so I really appreciate the, the, the work you guys are doing. It is really it means going to impact a lot of people. So I'm really happy to be part of this one. And, and thanks a lot because I I just dropped a message to, to Dr. Subo and, and he accepted. So that, that's really great. So thanks a lot. And I really Thank enjoyed you. interacting. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you, much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Uh, you, you you guys are able to download your certificate, but uh, please submit your uh, feedback. I link I, I have provided. It will be activated for five hours from now, and uh, I will provide the certificate on fifth of uh, December. Uh, Shoma, uh, you stop the recording and broadcasting. Uh, thanks, sir. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Sir, I will send.